found my first plant. <laughs> wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshods or Pechods or Pechaw! <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, 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 it's Thursday. I know you just saw me a couple of days ago, but uh, why make you wait? <laughs> Tom's watching and uh, Michael's watching and Austin's watching. How are you doing, everybody? Um, so this is one I've been kind of waiting for for a while. Uh, I haven't been able to find it on the shelves. I finally got a hold of one and I couldn't be more pleased. I've liked Larceny for a while. Um, I remember when I first tried it, I was at a friend's house in Columbus. And uh, I had tried a couple different ones. I'd tried Makers and I'd tried uh, Makers 46 and I'd tried a couple other ones. And then this one compared, this is a weeder. The, the other ones were rye. This one, well, the regular rye, the 92 proof rye. The regular Larceny, the 92 proof, to me seemed a little smoky uh, in, by comparison. So uh, I'm anxious to try this one. I have had Larceny many times since that day, uh, but I've not had, hi Mac. How are you? I have not tried the barrel proof, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Let's get it opened up. Let's get it breathing. Uh, again, because it's a barrel proof, I'm not going to go with the Glencairn. I want it to be able to breathe a little bit, so I'm going to put it in the official glass of the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. That being said, I had so much fun this week. Austin's, uh, I will get to that, Austin. Don't jump ahead now. <laughs> I will get to that, I promise. Um, okay, so I, I had a friend of mine contact me from Kentucky, and they said that this new bar is wanting to open up, and they're looking for a bourbon steward. <laughs> I just happen to be a bourbon steward, but I'm not going to drive. I'm not going to move four hours away from where I am. But they, they had some very specific questions about how they can get their bar on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And the short answer is you can't. The bourbon trail is meant for distilleries, and the only way that they can get this little town and this little bar on the bourbon trail is if somehow they incorporate a distillery. So I, we spent like an hour and 15 minutes on the phone, and uh, it was actually a really good call, and I had a blast talking about the history of, because they were on to do a distillery, right? So, but his, what makes distilleries, to some extent, fun is their history. So I started talking about like Uncle Nearest, and I started talking about um, uh, Jim Beam, and I started talking about Buffalo Trace and, and Castle and Key, uh, which used to be uh, Buffalo Trace before it was Buffalo Trace, uh, OFC. So I mean, it was just so much fun to have that conversation with somebody and be able to impart some knowledge. And I got a call back from my friend who referred me and said, oh, she wrote like four pages of notes down. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Larceny. Sorry. All right. Mike is watching. Hey, Mike. How are you? All right, this mic is not one that you're going to want to go for right now. This is barrel proof. This is hot, although I can smell it from here, and it's pretty nice. Denny is uh, watching. Denny was with us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he, uh, we did that thing live in Cleveland and, and had the, um, the Boone County pot still. That was fun. But this is barrel proof. This is larceny. All right, so let me get into my notes here as this starts to breathe. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, coming from the old Fitzgerald Distillery, which is a Heaven Hill Distillery, Larceny Barrel Proof. Their 92 batch debuted in 2012. This one, golly, I can smell it all the way from here. <laughs> this one debuted in 2020, and when it debuted, it got Whiskey of the Year from Whiskey Advocate. Now, there's, some, there's more to tell you about that. Excuse me, so Whiskey of the Year 2020. It, well... It even says so right here. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> okay. Uh, it also won a couple of a double gold at the World Spirits Competition. Uh, this is released three times. I'm getting to it now, Austin. This is released three times annually. It comes out in January, uh, May, and September. And you can tell which batch you've got by the label. This happens to be, here it is, here it is. This is B... I, I can look at it here too. B521. So this came out the second uh, release 
of 2021. Second release is B, it's also May, that's five, that's your month, and then 21 is the year. That's how you find out what barrel you have. Now, the one that won this, as you go forward in time, this has been reviewed every time it's come out. The four releases before this would have been the three in 2020 and the one in 2021 before this, they won awards. But all of them seem to pale in comparison with this one, B521, and the next one, C921. C921 is supposed to be the shizzle. <laughs> That's the one where they got their poop in the group and really came up with something unique. It wasn't something just, you know, the barrel proof of this. It was really something else. It's aged uh, six to eight years. Um, this particular proof is 60 0.5, so 100 and, 100 and 121, is that right? Yeah, if I can see that, 60.5, so it's 121 proof. All right, so that's how that works. Aaron's watching. Hey, buddy, uh, we're doing the uh, Larceny Barrel Proof tonight, 121 proof. Um, I think I've got that right. Yeah, so this is the one prior to the one, hey, Tyler, that's considered to be um, what's the word they used? Fine-tuned. All right, so the one after that is the fine... This one is supposed to be really good, and this one was reviewed well, so we'll get into that. Uh, this has got the same mash bill. Uh, I've had regular larceny and did enjoy it. Right now, I'm enjoying Old Forester 1910. Can't seem to put it down. That is a sweet one. That has got a nice... You, you can't go wrong with 1910. Um, I happen to like 1920 a little bit better, but I do really like 1910. Uh, that's a nice, smooth pour. It's got a Swedish side to it. The 1910, Mike, you're going to do just fine with 1910. Yeah, good good choice. Good choice. Okay. Um, where was I? <laughs> okay, the mash bill on this is 68% corn, 20% wheat, wheat, and 12% mal malted barley. Now, this there's nothing different about this mash bill. This mash bill is the exact same as what you'd get in regular larceny. Uh, it's also what you would get in the Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond, as well as, I think, some of the other Old Fitzgerald products. Um, it also happens to be the exact same mash bill as Rebel Yell. And this is fun. Rebel Yell is sourced to Luxco by Heaven Hill. Luxco was purchased by MGP. MGP is the biggest source in the nation. So the fact that they <laughs> are getting juice brought back to them from Heaven Hill to make, uh, no, to make um, Rebel, or Rebel Yell as it used to be called, I, I just find that interesting. You know, MGP sources, but this one they're bringing in from Heaven Hill. I think it's, fan I think it's really cool. Uh, love to land a larceny barrel proof, never had any. This is my first one, Tyler. Uh, so I'm kind of stoked because I'm hearing nothing but good about it. All right, what else do I have to tell you about this? All right, um, okay. So everybody says that to really unlock this, you got to add water. But one reviewer said it's good without, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to give this a try. I was getting the nose when it was sitting a foot away from me, so I'm, uh, I'm expecting good things. I do have notes. I wrote them down. I didn't memorize them, so I don't know who said what. Uh, but I will share with you what other people said, and it's never the same as what I think. <laughs> it never is. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. The, uh, the. See, they say that you're supposed to leave your mouth open when you, when you sniff. Problem is, I always take in too much air, and then I can't really get a good sniff because I'm, like, <gasps> full of air, <laughs> which most people say I am anyway. All right. Lester's watching. How's it going? Natalie's watching. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Boy, we got a full house tonight. That's fantastic. All right. Okay, so the very first thing that I got very, very off the top was bubble gum. And then that went away really fast. And then I got banana. And then that went away. I get cinnamon. A little oaky. There's a fruit to it. It's got a fruity nose, uh, maybe plum. Very fragrant. Uh, something floral is in it too, I think.
Yeah, I mean, this has got all the right notes. A little caramel. The ethanol doesn't seem real strong on the nose, but we're getting to that, aren't we? <laughs> 60.2 proof. <laughs> or yeah, alcohol by volume. The legs are right on the side of the glass, too. All right. That's fantastic. Wow. That's fantastic. That If you like Larceny at all, this just took it up five notches. That's fantastic. It does not drink like it's 120 whatever proof at all. And I said that about uh, the last one, too, that I did um, that was barrel proof, which all of a sudden I can't remember what it was. Um, last week's. Um, and I kind of said that about Nulu as well. What's up? <laughs> How's it going, Michael? <laughs> I love that. Um, that's really, really good. What did I say this was? Um, 121 proof. I just had to make... Now, every release is different. They're not all 121 proof. Some of them aren't quite up there. The ones in that first year, the first three, four, didn't quite get up there. Well, I guess the fourth one did. Uh, this one is one of the higher of the proofs. There's another one that's higher. I think the, the um, C, C21, C921 is higher proof yet. But, wow, that's really good. That is so mellow, so smooth. I think, if I had to guess, follow me here. <laughs> I have a theory, and so far it's proven right every single time. And it may not be anything, like, groundbreaking, but I said to you, mm, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, that for me, if you have something high proof, if it is aged longer in the barrel, if it's left in there for a while, it's going to come out being a lot smoother, and it's going to drink smoother than it's proof. Hmm? Okay. I think that's the same with any level of proof, whether you got an 80 proof, 90 proof, 100 proof, bottle and bond, or higher. <laughs> if you age that thing for a while, that mellowness is going to allow it to smooth out. The proof, as it ages, is going to go up because of evaporation. There's water in the barrel. As it heats up, that water will evaporate out, but the alcohol will not. Therefore, more alcohol by volume, higher proof, okay? Because the alcohol doesn't leave. So let's say you, you have a half a glass of water and a half a glass of alcohol, pure alcohol. The alcohol won't evaporate, but the water will. Stick that sucker under a heat light. The alcohol volume is going to stay the same, but the water is going to go away, right? That's what happens in the barrel. So the proof goes up. The alcohol by volume goes up. But when you let it sit there and age, when you let it sit there and cook for a while, uh, it, the results are just outstanding. Uh, most of the time, like George T. Stagg. I, I told you a couple of weeks ago when we did Nulu. Nulu's barrel proof. When, when I drank that one, I thought it was so good, but I said, this thing needs to sit longer. I think it's only aged for four years. It needs to sit longer. If that sucker would go 10, 12 years, Boy, I bet it would rival George T. Stagg. And I love George T. Stagg. That's my favorite. But this is fantastic. And this is aged six to eight years. Um, even just at a six-year, it's better than a four-year. And it's definitely better than a three-year. It's got to sit there for a while. That's really good. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Teresa, you're missing it. We'll come to the shoe. Uh, we're doing uh, Larceny Barrel Proof, and it's fantastic. It's fantastic. 
Uh, everybody does say to open it up with a little bit of water. Now we're going to do something a little bit different when it comes to the water. There is a cocktail that is called, I don't want to mess it up, the Bourbon and Branch. What Bourbon and Branch is, is essentially bourbon and water. That's all it is. Branch is water. But there's a distinction. Kevin says, not a fan of regular larceny, but really curious about this one. Was going to open mine, but is playing volleyball. Volleyball. You're, you're going to be in really great shape by the end of this winter. You're going to be, you're going to be ready for your bikini, Kevin. You're going <laughs> to just do the waxing. Okay. All right. Uh, branch water comes directly from the stream that the distillery is built on. That's the difference between just regular water that you get out of the tap or reverse osmosis or whatever. This is from the stream that the distillery is built upon. Some companies even bottle this water so the bar customers can further dilute their bourbon with the original bourbon water. This branch water starts its life in the underground limestone shelf that exists under most of Kentucky and part of Tennessee. The limestone shelf acts as a natural filter for water that passes over it. Branch water is particular for its lack of character with no traces of iron or other minerals that would be harmful to the whiskey making process. Drink two after the games. Good! <laughs> okay, so for this, normally I, I use my little stopper. But Kevin, who's talking to us from volleyball, uh, uh, convinced me a while back to get this, this uh, old limestone mixing water, the official companion of Kentucky bourbon, limestone filtered. So this is... If you want to really get down to the nitty gritty, this is branch water. This is the same water that they use to cook their mash in. This isn't what they cut it with. That's reverse osmosis. That is distilled water. This is branch water. So we're just going to add a little bit because it's already good the way it is. That's it. I'm not doing any more than that. I ain't doing it. Stick around. We're going to do a cocktail. And I'm going to tell you what's next week. Some of you may already know. If you caught the uh, margarita episode on Tuesday, you may already know. But for those of you who didn't see it, I will be recapping that. By the way, um, this is the first of two apologies during uh, this broadcast. The first one is that I was totally wrong on Tuesday. I told you that my margarita recipe does not come with hangover in the ingredients. And I was wrong. <laughs> That was a big margarita. Come on. I was wrong. I think it's the difference between bourbon and tequila. I don't drink very much tequila. And this was a really good tequila. This wasn't the poop. This wasn't bottom poop, bottom shelf poop. This was, this was good. All right. Tyler said, where can you get that water? Order online. Yes, you can order it through Amazon, and you can order it straight through the company. I will tell you, though, the shipping is insane. It would almost be more worth it to drive down and find it in Kentucky or wherever they may sell it and, and drive back. The, the shipping on it was stupid. I could have bought three bottles at retail, maybe four bottles at retail for the price I got one. So they get you on the shipping. I'm just saying. So Tyler, be warned. It's a, it's a gimmick. Again, you don't cut the bourbon with it. You know, that's, that's done with reverse osmosis. This is what they make the mash with. But it is branch water. It fits the bill. It fits what we're doing. It's supposed to really open up, so let's find out. Holy cow. The mouthfeel got more uh, buttery, which I always like. The spices really came out. Um, the proof is down. I just, I just knocked the proof down. It's probably about a hundred now. Eh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a scientist. I don't. I don't know how much I added, but, <laughs> but um, it did open it up. Boy, oh boy, there's a lot of flavor coming out. This is fantastic, guys. I'll be honest with you. I didn't find this on the shelf. I ordered it. If you want to know where, if you want to know where you can get it, PM my page, and I will tell you where I got it so you can get some. I will be ordering another one of these because I'm hoping that I'll get the B921. C921. C921. 
Because if that's better than this, boo, I'm going into space. This is fantastic. Yes, Amazon Prime has it, Tom, but it is, well, the shipping may be better off Amazon Prime, but the price may be higher. So you'll have to look and see. The shipping, I got it directly from Old Limestone because I really don't like contributing to the richest man on earth's pocketbook. I just, I don't. You know, there are other people out there trying to make a buck, and I, I got it right from the company, and I ended up paying for it. Uh, so that's up to you guys. If you want to do it on Amazon and you have Prime, go for it. Uh, you'll probably save a little money uh, and get the same product. Um, in some cases, it's worth it. In a case like tonight where the – now, the bourbon and branch, by the way, the, the drink – the actual cocktail, bourbon and branch, is done with two ounces of larceny and four ounces of the old limestone. I didn't add anywhere near that much. I might have added a half an ounce, maybe three quarters of an mm, maybe, maybe three quarters of an ounce. I only splashed it. So um, the bourbon and branch is going to be a highly, di- excuse me, highly diluted drink. Much like me, very diluted. <laughs> no, 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 different word, different word. <laughs> little wordplay, little English fun. Mm. That really comes alive. Uh, okay, some notes. Uh, I'm definitely getting some toast. Um, Consider it toast from the barrel because it isn't it isn't toast like bread. Maybe if you added like that cinnamon butter to it, just a light layer of it, toast. Um, gosh, that is good. My gosh. I may have found one of my new top tens. That's nice. Barkley is staring at me. <laughs> Yeah, I want some, Daddy. He says it's so good. I want some, too. No. He's older than me. <laughs> but to me, he's just a baby. And now Chewie wants up, too. They get so jealous. Shih Tzu's get so jealous. All right. All right. Okay. Um, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to... I'm going to read you the other notes that everybody else said. And I'll try to see if there's anything in there that just leaps out at me. Because right now, I'm almost enjoying it too much to pick out anything in specific. Yes, there's some cinnamon. Yes, there's um, maybe some clove. Maybe there's a fruit note. Maybe the plum. There's, But I'm going to read some of the other things. So uh, they say, Larson, he says, rich molasses, fig, and hazelnut. I got the hazelnut for sure. Fig? Fig? Who tastes fig in a bourbon? I, I know I'm a bourbon steward. I have to do ta- I do have to go take the executive bourbon steward class. That will refine my palate more, and I'll start saying fig <laughs> or not. <laughs> you know, if I reach for it, I can find a Newton. <laughs> if I because there is a little bit of a sweetness to this too. One of the things about the. Um, the regular larceny is it doesn't have a whole lot of sweetness to it. At least I don't think so. It's more oaky to me. Um, it's really, by the way, very, very good at an old fashioned. A lot of old fashions are served with the old granddad bonded. I don't mind that at all. I love old granddad, especially in an old fashioned. But uh, I was at Japs in Cincinnati. They ran out of old granddad and they wanted to know what I wanted to put in it. It was anything for the same price. Throw some larceny in there. Oh, man, was that good. Mm. Again, I just think larceny is just a little more smoky than other bourbons. And it's aged four to five years, uh, which is good. That's great. Uh, but this <laughs> this kicks regular larcenies behind, up and down the street. All right. Uh, okay, so they say that um, Breaking Bourbon says dried raspberries. Maybe. Maybe. I'm, I'm detecting fruit. I would rather... St- Gosh, that's a tough one. I would say maybe tart blackberries. I don't know about raspberries. That's really sweet. I'm not going to go there. Uh, But blackberries, when they're still new and still on the vine and they're not like mass produced in a grocery store, perhaps. Perhaps. Um, Toasted coconut, not getting that. I don't like coconut. 
Sugar cookie, it's sweet. There's, that's maybe. Cereal, yes. Clove, yes. Uh, yeah, so those are some of the notes that I got. And I can, I can tell you, it's all of that and then more. This is a beautiful pour. Mm. Adding a little bit of water just makes it buttery. Mm, 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 mm. I love this. All right. <laughs> I haven't been this excited about a bourbon in a long time. Next week better not turn me down. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Next week's better be better. Oop, not that. Uh, this. Excuse me. I beg your pardon. I got barked at. All right. I, this is apology number two. The first one was about having a hangover in my margarita because it was there. <laughs> I got up Wednesday morning and I had to go do my workout and I made it through, but it wasn't my best. I got told, you did a great job, you did a great job, but I have told her that words of affirmation work on me. <laughs> so. Don't belittle me. Don't, ah, oh, poor little baby can't get through it. That won't work on me. Telling me I did a great job, that will work. I will work harder for you if you tell me I did a great job. That's what she did. I don't believe her. <laughs> but I was sweating, and I, I don't know if it was just because it was a, one of those days where I didn't feel like it. It just didn't, wasn't feeling it, or because I was hungover. I think it was because I was hungover. But anyway, the second of my two apologies is this one. Look at this gorgeous ice sphere. It's gorgeous. This is not Wintersmith's, so before anybody starts getting on me about that, this is not Wintersmith's. This is the cheap mold that I got, but I was in a hurry, and I just wanted to make a couple of them, and I wanted to, I wanted to try something. I did the boiling water like normal. I put it in there for 24 hours, and when I pulled it out, it wasn't ready yet. I got, like, the Death Star, and not the good Death Star, the one in Return of the Jedi that wasn't quite done yet. That's what my sphere was. That's what it was. <laughs> So, uh, I put it back in, but the water in the mold was already nearly freezing. It was very cold. So I went ahead and filled the mold back up with just regular cold tap water. And by gum, I got a gorgeous, clear ice sphere out of it. I had been told by others that you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to use boiling water. Just do tap water. It'll be fine. Boiling water may have made it just a slight tad more clear, but not much. It may not be worth the effort. Uh, so my second apology is to tell you that um, boiling water or hot water may not be necessary. Not the worst idea. Just, just tap hot. It doesn't have to be boiling. Don't have to go to all that extreme. But just regular tap water will do the trick for you. All right. Boop. Let's go over ice. I'm not going to go too far over ice. I went farther than I expected. <laughs> and no, I'm not, I'm not feeling it, but I am really excited about this pour. This is more than I ever expected out of Larceny. I mean, I keep hearing how great it is, and I'm like, nah, come on, it's Larceny. It's, it's okay. It's all right. For what it is, it's all right. It's good. I like it. It's good. I just spilled it. Hmm. Just spilled it again. What's that say? Have you tried bottled water? Uh, gosh, Tom, you know, the thing about bottled water is you don't know what is being done with it. It's filtered, yes. Is it spring water? Is it reverse osmosis water? Is it limestone water? Is it Meh, 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 meh. I mean, there, every, there's not a single two bottled waters out there that taste the same. If you put like a, like a Deja Blue, which, by the way, is one of my favorites, up against a Dasani, the two of them taste completely different. And then you add an Ice Mountain beside that, and then whatever you get from Meyer or Kroger or whatever the store brand is, th they all taste different. There, there's no consistency. That's why I like using my filtered water at home because I have, conf I have, I have consistency from each pour. This was different because of the, the branch. I wanted to try the branch. It was part of a drink. It's not necessarily what I would normally use to dilute this, but I wanted to try it, and it actually worked out really nicely. It brought the flavors out very, very well. Would it have brought it out better 
with a distilled or a filtered water? Hard to say, I didn't do that. <laughs> All right, so this is it uh, iced down. The oak comes out a lot more. The barrel comes out more. There's actually a lot more flavor, a lot more of an explosion of yum <laughs> when it's on water. Um, the bubblegum notes came back to me on ice. Mm-hmm. A lot sweeter on ice. Candy-ish, almost. Um, yeah, I don't think I like that. I don't think I'd, I, I don't think I'd ever put this on ice. That being said, let's move on to cocktails. Da, 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 da. Now, I printed out several cocktails because I wasn't sure what I wanted to make. There was one I thought I would make, but I never made it to the store. And I needed an ingredient, and I didn't go get it. So there's bourbon and branch. We talked about that. I'm not doing that because, gosh, two ounces of larceny and four ounces of water. Can you even taste the larceny? That's a lot. Um, and I'm not even going to try it because I'm not impressed. Then I was going to do one called the Buck Wild. It has strawberries and ginger ale. I had everything but the strawberries, so I didn't make that. That actually really sounds good. Then there's the Boulevardier. And I love the Boulevardier. That's one of them that I really enjoyed making, and I really enjoyed the flavor of it. But I've already done that. I wanted to do something different. Uh, then the Old Fashioned. That's another one that's really popular. And again, I already had Larceny 92 proof with an Old Fashioned. I really liked it. Um, but I've already done that. Okay? So, uh, we are going to do one called the Getaway Car. Ba -ba -ba -ba! Oh, you know, I didn't give you the history of the Larceny thing. Let me do that real quick because it's pretty cool, really. Larceny, I'm going to have to put these on. <laughs> Larceny gets its name from John E. Fitzgerald, an agent for the U.S. Treasury Department in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Uh, because of its, uh, because of his position, Fitzgerald was one of a few people to have access to bourbon storage rickhouses. You see where this is going. Do you not? As the legend goes, he often broke into bourbon barrels, stealing tastes and even entire jugs for himself. If you've ever wondered why Larceny has a key on the label... Uh, it's, uh, you can thank Fitz. Fitzgerald was among the only people legally allowed to carry the keys to the barrel storage rickhouses, and that's how he stole it, see? I could, I could do that job. <laughs> I'd be like that guy on that miniseries that, where they stole the, the Pappy, Pappy Gate. Uh, that would be me. I, I won't lie. That would be me. All right. Um, so as the story goes, uh, goes, Fitzgerald initially built a Kentucky distillery in the seventies, 1870s, uh, becoming a legend in the whiskey world. The brand old Fitzgerald was then registered in the 1880s by Solomon Herbst, Herbst, who had heard the story of Fitzgerald and wanted to build a brand around it. Old Fitz was later sold during prohibition to Julian Pappy Van Winkle whose namesake brand arguably produces the most famous weeded bourbon. Indeed. Larceny barrels are a key ingredient, by the way, in Goose Island Bourbon County beer. Goose Island Bourbon County began releasing wheat wines aged in larceny barrels in 2019. Okay. All right. So let's make this bad boy. Uh, there's not a lot to it. It's pretty simple, as long as you have the right page up. So we're going to do... Dipstick me. I forgot my, my, uh, dang it. <laughs> I forgot my jigger. We're just going to wing it. Two ounces. You know what? Let's add ice first. All right. I'm going to wing it. That feels like about two ounces. If it's more, that's okay. That doesn't go on that. <laughs> this goes on that. I promise you, I'm not seeing double yet. All right. Uh, okay, so 
The next is an orange liqueur, and I have a choice here. I have the triple sec that I had the other night, or I can use the 80 proof Grand Marnier, or I can use the 80 proof Cointreau. I think I'm going to use the Grand Marnier. Now, <laughs> the large thing doesn't need the help. Oh my. It's already very high proof. So the 80 proof Grand Marnier is going to sting a little bit. So this is supposed to be an ounce. So we'll do about an ounce. That might be more. I don't know. <laughs> and then next, bring out the good stuff here. Uh -huh. uh, you know what? We're going to do this first. Just because I got a whole lemon, I'm going to use that bad boy and get my peel. And then cut that stinker in half and add about a half of, this is going to be a mess, about a half ounce of lemon juice, which is about what you're going to get out of half of a lemon if you give it a good squeeze, which I just done did. All right. So, uh, larceny, orange liqueur, and lemon juice, and that is it that on there put that there now the next step after I give this a good mix you want to get a frost you want to feel the cold on the glass which I do which there is <laughs> all right next I'm gonna take that lemon peel I'm going around the glass like so. oh I broke it <laughs> like so and then I'm going to take that glass and I'm going to dip it in sugar. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. It came right off. <laughs> All right, let's go through it again here. <laughs> it dried it right out. There we go. Beautifully rimmed. Beautifully rimmed. I love it. Then we take this. And we pour it in here. This is the getaway car. That's a big drink. <laughs> Probably because I didn't have my jigger and I couldn't measure anything. <laughs> All right. I like that. If I were to measure it correctly, it might e even be better, but just the way I did it, I like it. All right. So we have done larceny barrel proof, neat. We've added just a little bit of water, which I got to tell you, it's a tough call as to which one's better. I like it neat a lot, but on water, I like that a lot. There's so much flavor there. It's just, it's just, it's like, it's unpacking it, right? It, oh, it's just incredible. Denny's saying, no larceny in the house tonight, sipping on flat boat, white oat, single barrel, 100 proof from the Founders Company in Louisville. You're having one that I've never heard of before, Denny. Save me a sip for the next time I come up your way. <laughs> Sounds good. I love a good bottled and bond. Um, no, this is, I'm sorry, excuse me, pardon me. Yeah, it's really good. Anyway, I like it neat. I like it on water, ice, meh, meh. Some are better on ice, this isn't. Um, really like it neat and on water. So if you get a chance to get this, you should. Um, time to try it. I got to find it, Denny. For me to try it, I got to find it. You found it. I didn't find it. <laughs> so I'll look for it next time I'm down there. Or, I don't know, where's my invitation? In the mail? Hmm? <laughs> anyway, 
That's really good. Um, okay, next week, I'm going to finish this at my leisure. <laughs> All right, next week, we talked about this on Tuesday. I'm going to do it again tonight so you see what we're going to do. Next Thursday, I'm going to bring out Jacob's Pardon. I've heard nothing but good about this, and it's kind of an enigma. It's sitting out there going, what is it? What's it taste like? And it's sat there on the shelf for a while. This was in the buy one only at the liquor store, and then it mysteriously ended up back on the regular shelf because nobody was buying it. So we're going to find out if it's just because people didn't know what it was and hadn't heard of it, or more than that. We're going to try this. Now, I've heard nothing but good since then. The people that picked this up are excited that they picked it up. The people that distill Jacob's Pardon, from what I understand, have an idea of doing a different type of release every year. So this one is Jacob's Pardon. They may or may not make this again. There's going to be something else that's going to be coming out from this distillery at another time in the future. It's supposed to be different than this. So I, I, I love that. I love the fact that you've got these small distilleries that are experiencing experimenting, trying new things, deciding what it is they want to be when they grow up. <laughs> um, so this could be really fantastic or it could be awful. We're going to find out next week. Uh, I will do some research and see if there's a cocktail to be made. Um, if there is, we'll be right here. If there isn't, we'll be downstairs <laughs> and we'll just try it without all the cocktail rigmarole. Uh, but Jacob's Pardon is next week. And then I've got another one that I'm going to do the week after that. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, but I'm really excited about it. It's one that was recommended to me, and I went through an arduous process to get it. It's like American Gladiator or whatever this thing's in. We're just swinging around like chimpanzees through the – no, it was tough. It was hard. I'm, I'm still tired. Maybe that's why I couldn't work out on Wednesday. Not because I was hungover, but because I was tired from getting this bourbon. <sighs> I'm still tired. <laughs> Maybe not so much. All right. Uh, Denny, you say it's available in Louisville. Great. Um, it's funny. I was talking to somebody near Louisville who said Louisville. And I'm thinking to myself, as an Ohioan, no, it's not Louisville. It's Louisville. You got to swallow it. Come on. Where are you from? Then she told me she traveled a lot, so I get it. <laughs> All right. Um, Tyler says, pump for the pardon review. All right. Well, that's next Thursday. So... Make sure you come back for that. I, I got to tell you, I'm pumped for it too. It's been sitting downstairs for a while. I've had it and I haven't opened it. And I, I need to open it. I just really, really want to open it. Um, let's see. This is 109.3 proof. Not as hot as this one. Uh, but I don't know how long it's been aged. It's number two. So it's the second of the batches they put out. It's a Tennessee whiskey, so I may not even like it. If it goes through the uh, Lincoln County process, I may not like it. However, it's aged a minimum of eight years, it says. Eight years. Uh, maybe I will like it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, shout out to somebody who will remain unnamed. Uh, I had been looking for Uncle Nearest 1884. I had run out of it, and I really, really enjoyed that pour. I got an, uh, a, a private message the other day that somebody had found it for me, and I want to thank them for finding that for me. We met up. Uh, it was a great meetup. Neat, neat person. Really enjoyed uh, talking to this person, and uh, it, it was – we stood in the parking lot for probably 45 minutes to an hour. It was really a nice meetup. Really enjoyed it. And, uh, and now I have Uncle Nearest 1884 again, which I have not seen anywhere. Uh, so, um, really grateful for that. Uh, uh, missing something here. Okay, good. So, uh, Uncle, or <laughs> Uncle Nears. So, the uh, Jacob's Pardon is next week, next Thursday, and I will research this and find out more about it and come up with a great cocktail. And in the meantime, I'm going to finish this bad boy and maybe have another shot of this bad boy because it's really good. That's how far I've gotten tonight on this bottle. <laughs> How much farther can I go before I'm not able to work out tomorrow morning? <laughs> we'll find out. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, guys. You have a great uh, week. Uh, God bless you for joining me. I really appreciate all the, um, all the, all the chatting back and forth and uh, 
the sharing, and uh, this is this is so much fun. And the more people that come, and the more people that interact, the more fun it is. So thank you for that. Uh, we're on. Uh, eventually, I'll get back to take the photos. The photos. So tonight's photo of Larceny was not mine. It was it was theirs. Um, <laughs> I was supposed to be taking photos of larceny this week, and I took a photo of a, of a, of a red-tailed hawk, which was really cool. I'll put it online here in a little bit because uh, it, it's really cool. He flew down in the backyard. I think he was chewing on a squirrel, and then it was really cool. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll put that up. Um, but I will start getting back to some of my own photography um, as things warm up. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. We'll be doing Jacob's Pardon, and I personally can't wait, uh, and uh, I look forward to it. Take care.